My name is Albert Jekste. I am Latvian. Manager of Latvian film production, I was responsible for all photography for the free Latvian government. The film you are about to see is a true record. If the police had caught me with it, I would have been shot. This is this story of what happened to my country, Latvia. In one year, terrible year, when Latvia was invaded and occupied by the Soviets. The scenes you will see are part of history. They are past. But I ask you to look at them and think. What happened to Latvia has happened to other nations. Don't let it happen to yours. Latvia is an ancient nation like Austria and Lithuania, our neighbors on the Baltic Sea, which borders us on the north. On the south is Poland, on the west is Germany, and on the east is Russia. We Latvians have our own traditions, our own language, our own culture. Since the early 19th century, we have won many battles for our independence. Our short history as a free nation shows that we have asked nothing of the world but peace and the freedom to enjoy it. In 1918, Latvia won its independence. At this ceremony in Riga in 1920, our first president, Chaksta, is decorated with of the men who distinguished themselves in the final struggle through which we won our independence from the Russians. Our national heroes were the men who helped to make us free. In honoring them, as we are doing here in 1921, the entire Latvian people voicing our determination to preserve and make the most of the freedom we had won after so long. Something else happened in 1921. These are starving Russian peasants who fled across the borders into Latvia. They were among the world's first refugees from the Regime. This is 1926, a great song festival in which our entire nation participated. On the right, you see President of Finland, who was Latvia's guest. God Bless Latvia is our national anthem. It was the closing song at this festival of a free people. In 1939, our beloved poet Virza wrote The Fateful Summer, which prophesied the shape of things to come for the people of Latvia and the other Baltic countries. The summer, he said, will never again be the same as it was. The Soviet Union had demanded that we enter into a mutual assistance pact it was said that communist might would protect the nations on the boat. But we knew that the treaty would be used as a pretext for other things. In October 1939, the borders of Latvia and Estonia were forced open. The nations were to be hosts to thousands of communist troops. In Latvia, they demanded these bases. These in Estonia, still others in Lithuania. On June 15, 1940, the town of Maslin was sacked. The Soviets claimed that we had attacked first. They told the world that a nation of 186 million people had to be protected from six million assaults. On June 16, we received an ultimatum. Submit to total occupation or be attacked. This meant the end of independence. June 17th, 1940, they moved in to complete the occupation of all three 
countries. This was in direct violation of four treaties between Latvia and the Soviet Union. A peace treaty signed in 1920, a treaty of peace and friendship 1921, a non-aggression pact 1932, and the mutual assistance of October 1939. This pact guaranteed no interference in Latvian civil affairs. Against this armed strength, there was no possibility of resistance. On the same day, Andrei Vyshinsky eager to initiate the new order. He appointed a puppet government with August Kirchensteins as prime minister. Communists replaced every loyal Latvian in the cabinet. On June 21st, the jails were opened, supposedly for political prisoners. The men who were released were given uniforms and weapons. They became a new police force. On that day, the new government decreed a Thanksgiving demonstration, and the people were ordered into the streets to participate. Special Soviet envoy Vyshinsky reviewed the parade from the Soviet embassy. He promised that Latvian independence would be respected. These are Russians who have been sent in as civilian technicians with the troops. The banners and signs had been prepared by fifth columnists. These banners demanded that the Kirchenstein's government seek admittance into the Soviet Union. Johannes Spure, second secretary of the Communist Party, formally presented the demand to the Latvian parliament. Members of the parliament had also been appointed by Vyshinsky. There were no opposing votes. The proceedings were watched carefully by members of the NKVD. On the same day in Estonia, an identical proposal was made before a new Estonian parliament with Soviet troops supporting the communist-appointed government. Their presence in the chamber was in direct violation of the Estonian constitution. On August 3rd, Kirchensteins left Riga with a delegation to the Supreme Soviet. As the head of the new Latvian government, he was to petition for the acceptance of Latvia as a Soviet state. He was received in Moscow with all the honors befitting his mission. Similar delegations from Estonia and Lithuania would receive the same honors. This is the inside of the Kremlin. It has been very rarely photographed. The welcome for the Latvian delegation included a plot from Stalin himself. The Latvian delegation, led by Kirchensteins as prime minister, was made up of communists. They were surrendering the Latvian flag for the right to fly Weimar and Sickle. The audience was made up of representatives of the other states in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Kirchensteins read his speech badly in Latvian. It had been written in Moscow, and he had not had a chance to study it. His audience did not understand it. They applauded on cue with machine-like precision when they heard the names of Soviet leaders. Other Soviet leaders besides Stalin were Khrushchev, Malenkov, and Zhdanov. On August 5th, 1940, Latvia joined the Soviet Union. Estonia was next. Joining in the applause were Molotov, Nikoyan, and Gaganovich. An enthusiastic demonstration speeded Kirchenstein's on his way home. There is little doubt that what had taken place was a triumph of communist planning. For Kirchenstein's welcome back to Latvia, Soviet troops were the guard of honor. The red flag was flying over Latvia. It would also replace the flag of Estonia. New regime national holidays were declared at frequent intervals, sometimes as often as once a week. On these occasions, stores, factories, and offices were closed, and the people were ordered into the streets for mass demonstrations. The theme was the promise of the future, the dawning of a new era of peace and prosperity. After a while, there were two holidays a week. Latvia, as a free nation, had ceased to exist. We had been independent for exactly 22 years, five months, and 27 days.